I'm not what you would call a morning person. I usually stay up pretty late at night and rarely ever wake up before, say, noon on a free day. Um, in that regard, my experience with Soccer Mommy's Clean was pretty exceptional. On Friday, the 2nd of March 2018, that's two days ago at the time of recording, it was about 6 a.m. when I woke up, uh, groggy and miserable. But as much as I tried, I couldn't fall back asleep. So I got up, took a cold shower, and then went to my computer. I had the intention of reviewing the newest Sludge album that just came out. However, I couldn't really do it. Not to say it was bad, on the contrary, but the fast pace, technical frenzy, and heavy aggression were just way, way too much for me in the state of mind I was in. I still wanted to make a review, though, so I rechecked the list of new albums that came out that day, and I saw this. For some reason, I found this image so very compelling and almost representative of how I was feeling. An overall oniric yet organic vibe. I really wanted to give it a, a go, hoping the music would capture that. It did. And it's exactly what I needed. Soccer Mommy is Sophie Allison, a young woman of 20 from Nashville, Tennessee. She was already getting quite the reputation with her demos and earlier recordings from her bedroom studio, but Clean is her very first full-fledged LP. It came out the 2nd of March 2018 through uh, Fat Possum Records, an independent label from Oxford, Mississippi. The album was produced by Gabe Wax and mixed by Ali Chant. And here's to hoping I'm pronouncing all of this correctly. Since this was my first experience with Soccer Mommy, I went back and listened to her previous work to know a little bit how, uh, what to compare it to. And although everything is very enjoyable and well-written, it's uh, pretty dreamy and intimate, I can really say that with Clean, uh, Sophie Allison really evolved tremendously all while keeping what made her so good in the first place. First off, let's talk about what I love the most from this album, and that is its production, how the instruments sound, uh, the, the space they occupy in the mix. The musicians involved all played real instruments instead of having them programmed, and you can definitely hear it. It sounds awesome, it sounds warm, it sounds welcoming and organic, kind of like a comforting heartbeat. There are some grooves in there that really get you going with that also pleasant uh, head massage, but it never loses focus or loses respect for the original oniric feel of the song. It always stays focused and it makes songs like Cool or Your Dog pop and feel so satisfying. Whenever all the instruments come together, it always creates a richness that is truly engaging. Flaw is a track that perfectly exemplifies this with its build-up. Great build-ups being a major good point in this whole album. I'm not really aware of how the album was recorded, but everything sounds like it was played live, uh, kind of like an old jazz record, if you if, if you catch what I'm trying to say. Uh, I'm pretty sure it wasn't, but it, it's so analog and organic that it almost feels like every musician was actually playing the album live while being recorded. And I think this kind of sound suits this LP really well. It really contributes to the overall atmosphere of the album. Uh, which is very present throughout. Uh, the guitars, for example, uh, for the most part, for the most part, sorry, sound very soothing and comforting to the ear. Uh, they have great tones in general, but it's not only that. You can hear the pick uh, picking through the strings. You can hear the the fingers going through uh, up and down the neck, and 
that's the kind of sound I, I always liked, especially for this kind of music, and it fits really well here. The notes and the chords they play are also very airy and atmospheric too. There's a ton of feel and ambience behind them. Uh, it also goes for the effects pedals that they used. They always uh, fill just the right space in the mixing. The album features an instrumental interlude, which I think showcases the guitars really well. Have a listen. Keyboards and ambient sounds play a major role in maintaining an atmosphere throughout the runtime. Listen to Blossom, for example, and you will hear that the ambient, ambient moments are really well executed and well placed. The mixing itself sometimes goes out of its way to end songs on a dark twist or simulate glitches and bugs in the mix, and I thought that was really cool because not only do these moments contribute to the atmosphere, but they also validate some of the darker themes of the lyrics. Uh, because yes, uh, even though the album, the, its music isn't really sad or anything, it's merely melancholic in a beautiful way, um, sometimes it's not the same story with its, some of its lyrics. Um, this first one is Your Dog, it was the lead single, and it's kind of like a quiet rage from feeling like you're being neglected or not getting everything out of a relationship. Your Dog is Clean's lead single, and you can tell it holds great importance for Sophie Allison. She tells that the lyrics are about feeling paralyzed in a relationship, to the point where you feel like a pawn. Breaking away and taking action for yourself, although only being for a quick moment of motivation, amidst a long submission. That's not exactly what she said, but you get the gist of it. The disappointments of love, as I read somewhere, is uh, a recurring theme throughout the album. Uh, it's also present on the seventh track, uh, Skin, which is also pretty well written. Because you see, Alison rarely falls for the tired cliches that you can often find in broken-hearted, sad love songs. I, to me, it seems like she writes with a, a genuine intimacy and a lot of elegance. And it's not all so dark all the time either. There's a lot of positive in there too. Uh, Self-empowerment is a very important subject in this record. The discovery or, or rather the acceptance of self through growth and change is something that you'll hear quite often in this record. It's definitely not always sunshine and rainbows and super happy, but in the end it's all worth it and it's worth the, the tears and the darker days. Allison stated that she wanted to make a full, close-knit piece of her life with those themes in this album. And to me, it seems like she succeeded very well. It, just, it felt like a really self-revelatory like, time in my life, like writing it. And it just felt very like, this is me. This is how like I always am going to be. Like I need to not like hide from myself. And so I realize I haven't really talked about the vocals yet. So yeah, the lyrics are excellent. But I have to say that... Um, the vocals weren't really my favorite part of this album. Uh, I'm not saying they're bad, like, not at all. Uh, actually, Alison is a, is a really talented singer. She has a beautiful, mature voice, yet very delicate too. And she hits her notes and everything. Um, what I'm saying is, she's been around for very little time. She's far, far from having peaked yet. She, she's basically just starting out. So we still haven't really seen her full potential. I'm saying this, uh, I'm thinking about the sixth song, I think, uh, it's called uh, Last Girl. And ironically, it's one of my favorites because of its more pop rock rhythm and uh, killer harmonies in the chorus. But maybe it's just me, but I feel like the singing sometimes falls just a tad bit flat. Maybe I'm wrong, and, and then again, it's a very small complaint, and if, if anything, I'm just glad it wasn't fixed in the mix.
despite this very small complaint, I, I did really enjoy the singing. Mostly in more calmer songs, I think they fit, they fit, her voice fits these kind of songs more than more uplifting songs like, like, like Last Girl, I'm sorry. Um, but yeah, the singing was really good, except for that one bit, which I wasn't really sure about. You guys tell me what you think about it. So I think that's pretty much all I have to say. Um, Sucker Mommy took me by surprise, really. Everything in Clean is heartfelt, uh, pretty emotional. Uh, it's very dreamy and surreal. Yet the, at the same time, is very down to earth and and warm, very organic. Once again, those are the two keywords I think to describe the sound of this album. Uh, it's oniric and organic. Uh, it was quite the random find, actually. Uh, a hunch, practically. It wasn't even the album I was supposed to review, and I chose to listen to it solely based on the weirdly entrancing cover image, and it turned out to be exactly what I needed on that day. Discoveries like this are the reason why I want to get involved more in reviewing and discovering new music. It's really fun and exciting. Uh, listen to this album, guys. It's, it's really worth it. It's about 35 minutes long, so... You really have the time. So listen to it. I'd say listen to it early in the morning with your coffee on hand and looking through the window, seeing life slowly get busy while the sun is rising. Uh, trust me, it's quite the magical experience. But, you know, maybe I'm just being weird, right? So tell me what you guys think in the comments. Uh, I'll be seeing you really soon, for real this time. I've had uh, quite a bit of free time and I have a couple of covers up my sleeve. And I want to try maybe getting bit more serious about reviewing albums because this is getting quite fun so yeah tell me what you think in the comments guys and i can't wait to see you again have a good one